Hello women made in the image of God. Today we're back with another Bible in a year video and we get to read Psalm 39 to 41 and we get to read Acts 23, 12 through 35. So let's pray and read the word. Dear Heavenly Father, dear precious Holy God, um, we just pray that today you would teach us your ways, God, that you would... Um, Help us, Lord. Thank you that you, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, O oh God. That your word strengthens us and and uh, gives life to our souls. Um, uh, yeah, just thank you, God. Would you please um, be s helping us to store up your words in our heart, Lord? Um, yeah, that we would not sin against you lord that, but that we would grow in greater conformity to christ that we would increase um, in love for you and reverence for you lord um and hope in you lord thank you that you've written down your words for our encouragement for us to have hope lord um and to help guard us and deliver us from um, what is not according to your will, to teach us what is your will. So, Lord, we just pray that um, today you would just continue to guide us and, and help us, Lord. Uh, please deliver us from evil, Lord, for, for yours is the kingdom and the glory forever. Please be with us today. Show us Christ. Show us your gospel. Give us understanding according to your word, Lord. We need you. You're so beautiful and kind and gracious. Thank you for putting breath in our lungs right here and now so, and giving us the ability to read together. Oh God, be glorified. Oh God of salvation, save. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so open up in your Bible to Psalm 39. Psalm chapter 39. Psalm 39 To the choir master, to Jejuthun, a psalm of David. I said, I will guard my ways, that I may not sin with my tongue. I will guard my mouth with a muzzle, so long as the wicked are in my presence. I was mute and silent, I held my peace to no avail, and my distress grew worse. My heart became hot within me, as I mused, the fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue, O Lord, make me know my end, and what is the measure of my days? Let me know how fleeting I am. Behold, you have made my days a few handbreadths, and my lifetime is as nothing before you. Surely all mankind stands as a mere breath. Selah. Surely a man goes about as a shadow. Surely for nothing they are in turmoil. Man heaps up wealth and does not know who will gather. And now, O Lord, for what do I wait? My hope is in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the scorn of the fool. I am mute. I do not open my mouth, for it is you who have done it. Remove your stroke from me. I am spent by the hostility of your hand. When you discipline a man with rebukes for sin, you consume like a moth what is dear to him. Surely all mankind is a mere breath. Selah. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Hold not your peace at my tears. For I am a sojourner with you, a guest like all my fathers. Look away from me, that I may smile again before I depart and am no more. Psalm 40 To the Choir Master, a Psalm of David I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the pit of destruction, out of the miry bog, and set my feet upon a rock making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. 
Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after a lie. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us. None can compare with you. I will proclaim and tell of them, yet they are more than can be told. Aim and toward us. None can compare with you. I deeds and you have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us. None can compare with you. I will proclaim and tell of them, yet they are more than can be told. In sacrifice and offering you have not delighted, but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. Then I said, Behold, I have come, and the scroll of the book it is written of me. I delight to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. Behold, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, O Lord. I have not hidden your deliverance within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. As for you, O Lord, you will not restrain your mercy from me. Your steadfast love and your faithfulness will ever preserve me. For evils have encompassed me beyond number. My iniquities have overtaken me, and I cannot see. They are more than the hairs of my head. My heart fails me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those be put to shame and disappointed altogether who seek to snatch away my life. Let those be turned back and brought to dishonor who delight in my hurt. Let those be appalled because of their shame who say to me, Aha! Aha! But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say continually, Great is the Lord! As for me, I am poor and needy, but the Lord takes thought for me. You are my help and my deliverer. Do not delay, O oh my God. Psalm 41 To the Choir Master, a Psalm of David Blessed is the one who considers the poor. In the day of trouble the Lord delivers him. The Lord protects him and keeps him alive. He is called blessed in the land. You do not give him up to the will of his enemies. The Lord sustains him on his sickbed. In his illness you restore him to full health. As for me, I said, O Lord, be gracious to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies say of me in malice, When will he die and his name perish? And when one comes to see me, he utters empty words, while his heart gathers iniquity. When he goes out, he tells it abroad. All who hate me whisper together about me. They imagine the worst for me. They say, A deadly thing is poured out on him. He will not rise again from where he lies. Even my close friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted his heel against me. But you, O Lord, be gracious to me, and raise me up that I may repay them. By this I know that you delight in me. My enemy will not shout and triumph over me. But you have upheld me because of my integrity, and set me in your presence forever. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and Amen. So good. Wow. Beautiful Psalms. Um So 39. Um this is so good uh to think about um that we we also should guard our ways that we may not sin. 
And so, like, there's verses, like, also that said, like, I stored up your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. That's, like, super crucial. Um, we should be guarding our ways. You know, it's like the verse, uh, the passage when Jesus says, uh, this passage, Matthew 5, 30. Yeah, so this part says, uh, you have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery, but I say to you that everyone who looks at a l woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away, for it is better that you lose one of your members th than that your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than your whole, than that your whole body go into hell. This is so crucial. We have to be um, like um, incredibly um, aggressive about killing sin. You you don't just kind of try no you aggressively put it to death um if you're in christ you're dead to sin and you're alive in christ uh but you will still have uh in galatians 5 it describes the battle against the the flesh and um but the power of the holy spirit and the fruits of the spirit um when jesus saves us he doesn't just save us and then say all right do now continue on your own no he literally has given to us uh his precious holy spirit um and through the power of the spirit we can we can kill sin and uh we can have vic, vic we now have victory over sin because of Christ's triumph death triumphant death and his resurrection and he's raised us to new life um uh, but while we're still in this earthly weak earthly tent um longing to be clothed with our heavenly body in the new heaven and earth uh, but as we are right now uh, we still battle against the our old fallen flesh um but yeah anyways that all that to say we must kill sin um and so the reason why i'm saying this is because like we all we ought to guard our ways as well that we may not sin with our tongue or with anything you know that we wouldn't like speak stupidly we have to watch what we say james the book of james very clearly communicates that uh, and helps us with that for example the verse about being slow to speak and not sitting in your anger passage um it's crucial um that whole actually the, james is so good for so many reasons james chapter one is just really good you know do not be deceived uh you know i can't hold on a second i want to actually go there i just want to read you this while we're on this topic this is so good blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial for when he has stood the test he will receive the crown of life which god has promised to those who love him Ultimately, conquering sin is through knowing the love of Christ for you, that he would so die for you and love you, you know, that he would do that. Um, and therefore, you're loving him in response. That That's what creates victory over sin. Um, and in your love of him, you will put sin to death. You will guard, guard your ways because you love him. Um, and you will... Um, cut cut it off you know because you love him because he first loved you so the more consumed you are with the love of god the more that you're going to live for him um but anyways um yes it says verse 13 of james 1 let no one say when he is tempted i'm being tempted by god for god cannot be tempted with evil and he himself tempts no one but each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire then desire when it has conceived birth to sin and sin when it is fully grown brings forth death death 
sin always leads to death. In the unbeliever's life, eternal death. In the believer's life, you still experience death. You see a family that, uh, for example, like a, a husband that, that commits adultery against his wife, it co brings death, you know? Like the family is then affected by that and they'll, they may never reconcile after that. Uh, and it could cause so much problems for, the, for them. I mean, look at David. His kids literally like... It was so bad. I mean, if you remember what we just what we read earlier in there, yeah, God forgave David because David, um, you know, is one of one of those that Christ was going to die for and now has, and you know, um, and, but but it still brought just destruction to da David's life and David's children's lives. Um, so yeah. Anyways, do not be deceived. My beloved brothers, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Uh, be doers of the word. And, and then, ah, oh, so good. Such a good chapter. But I wanted to read you this part. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers, for every good and perfect gift is, is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. God is greater. Don't be a, don't be deceived, and what God has for you is greater too. Um. Uh. Yeah. So. Yeah. Don't be deceived. Guard your ways. Um. Yeah. There's so. There's so much other uh glorious things in this passage. Uh, the the you know the chapters that we read today. Um. Yeah, I have this song where like I I wrote like, uh I wrote like, he loves me though I'm but a breath something 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 and I I just like that line because it's like I'm literally just like a br a mere breath and yet he cares for me and like I just I just you know when I should have died in my sin, um God plucked me from from death and and his lavished on me his love which is amazing but yeah like people are storing up wealth and blah blah you know just but but like this may this be our confession and now oh lord for what do i wait my hope is in you this is such a good verse to have written down somewhere and put in your face somewhere you know where you can see it because it's like what are you really waiting for like you like your hope is in, in God. You have him and you're also looking forward to his return. So it's like he is the greatest thing to put your hope and trust in um, because he does not change. So um, may your, may this be your confession. And now, oh Lord, what for what do I wait? My hope is in you. Um, crying out to God for forgiveness is good. Um, and yeah this is a good prayer too and this reminded me of first peter um you need to remember that you are uh you are a sojourner in this land so i recommend reading the whole chapter honestly i recommend reading the entirety of first peter it's so beautiful but i'll just read this verse for you for right now beloved i urge you as sojourners and exiles to to abstain from the passions of the flesh which wage war against your soul. Uh, keep your conduct among, among the Gentiles honorable so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. Yeah. You're, you're not of this world anymore. If you're in Christ, you've been called out. You're a called out one. 
uh, your your sojourner in, in exile uh, with other fellow sojourners and exiles together. This, yeah, it's so good. Um, so, um, yeah, and this is good. We should be waiting patiently for the Lord. And uh, we knowing these beautiful truths that the Lord, this is really, he's done this in my life. And he continues to do it. It's amazing. Truly blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust. So true. Amen. Um, do not turn to the proud or, or, go, or go. Do not. And do not go astray after a lie. Do not. Do not go astray after a lie. Stick to the Lord who is worthy of our trust and that the best to hope in forever more ever. Um Yeah, that's so good. This is so true. Amen. Amen. So yes, I mean we should tell of them and, and uh just like telling people of his uh his goodness. Um but yeah, you definitely see Christ in 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 uh in the verses here uh, Christ never sinned so you see that's David but Jesus is a greater David who is without sin um, and this this is Jesus right here behold I have come in the, in the scroll of the book it is written of me I delight to do your will oh my god your law is within my heart so true Luke 24 uh, 44 Let's actually go there. Then he said to me, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Exactly. Um, but yeah. I think there's another verse where this is. Yeah, amen. And then Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Mm -hmm. This also reminds me of when Jesus reads the Isaiah scroll. And he's like, yep, this is me. <laughs> and everyone's like, "What? You're you're just a fish, or you're just a um, carpenter, or whatever." Uh, so disrespectful. Um, but Jesus, yeah, Jesus is, Jesus is God. He's the Savior that was to come and has come. He's the Christ, the Messiah. Um. But yeah, we we should speak of of his deliverance, his faithfulness, his salvation, his steadfast love to the congregation, to the lost, everywhere we go, that the whole earth might know him. Um, but yeah, it's so good. This is the character of our precious God. He's so good. He's so good. Amen. Amen to that. And, and love this, love this, so, so true. As for me, I am poor and needy, but the Lord takes thought for me. Uh, so good, what a beautiful truth. Uh, you are my help and my deliverer, do not delay, oh my God. Amen. Also, this is the only context in which we should be saying, oh my God, is when we're addressing God and in love and affection not uh, flippantly. So if, if you've been affected by the way that our culture uses this phrase, please, please correct that language. The Lord's name is not to be taken in vain. It's serious. Don't do that. Ask God for help with that. He can give us victory over the improper usage of words. I literally used to speak. I used to say, like curse like three times per sentence so if the lord could help me not do that anymore and 
in Christ, then he can help us, each of us in that way. If the Lord helped me stop using this phrase, he can help you too. I've even been convicted that like when we say gosh, like what is that? Like you're basically saying the same thing. Just say like G willikers or something. I don't even know what that means, but <laughs> do something else. Uh, anyways. Um, but yeah, so good. We, we ought to consider the poor. This is super important to the Lord throughout the scriptures. So like, we're not to be chasing after a white picket fence. We're to be helping the poor and especially those who are of the household of God. That's what the, what the word says. Um, yeah, if you have anything, whatever you have, you've been given it so that you can bless other people. It's, it's not for you alone. <laughs> this this is Jesus right here. This reminded me of Jesus and and how Judas, uh, Judas, uh, betrayed Jesus. Um. So yeah. And ultimately, the Lord will uh will repay all that do not turn to Him in repentance and faith in that last day. Um, and, and this is Jesus. Jesus is the one who is, uh, always has his integrity, um, uh, and he is in his presence forever. God's presence, the Father. Um, and one day we'll be with him. That's gonna be awesome. But yeah, blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen good way to end our reading of psalms today but yeah let's let's uh go to brother sproul's notes reformation study bible notes rc sproul psalm 39 41 ps 39 this lament is more personal and autobiographical than most the author seems to have been an older reflective person like the writer of ecclesiastes his anger vv 23 is not unlike jobs numerous links between pss 38 and 39 invite us to read ps 39 as an added perspective on the struggles endured in ps 38 there are three strophes, introduction to Hebrew poetry, the inner turmoil of a silent sufferer, VV. 1-3, a despairing reflection on human existence, VV 4-6, and a prayer. Then apparently, 39-1-3, these verses express the inner turmoil of a silent sufferer. 39, not sin with my tongue. The psalmist may have been questioning the prosperity of the wicked and fearing that if he spoke in his anger and frustration, he might say something offensive to God. Muzzle, he desires to speak out and has to force himself to be quiet. 39, my distress, the psalmist repressed his feelings but could not do away with them. Finally he spoke. 39 for 6. These verses are a despairing reflection on human existence. Measure of my days. Their short hard lives tempted the faithful as they compared them to the prosperity of the wicked and questioned God's wisdom and justice. See note, on 8.5. For nothing. The same Hebrew word is translated, mere breath in V5. The sentiment is similar to that found in Ecclesiastes 20. 39 7, 13. These verses are a prayer. 39. My transgressions. In the context of 38 for 18, it seems that the psalmist's sin is at least part of the underlying cause of his suffering. 39 10 your stroke. This could be sickness, but it could include depression and other setbacks in life. 39. Wave. The psalmist has passed from anger to weeping. The strong emotion of the psalm makes its final prayer especially vivid. 3 9 13 smile again before I depart. There is almost a despairing hope at the end of the psalm. PS 40. This psalm has two sections, thanksgiving, VV 110, and lamentation, VV 11 17. God has answered an earlier prayer of the psalmist, but he still has problems to bring before God. He looks to God in a new time of crisis. 41 13. These verses are thanksgiving. 42 Pit of destruction, rock. A miry pit is contrasted with the sure footing of a rock. Sheol, the grave, is often pictured as a pit. The 633 in notes, perhaps the psalmist was ill and threatened with death, or, since the psalm is probably royal, he may have felt the threat of death in battle. 43 New song, see note on 33 3. Proud, blessed, see note on 111, proud. A rare word used of Egypt in 87, and they're simply translated, Rahab. Here, it probably refers to the idols of the surrounding nations. 46. You have not delighted. The psalmist knows that the animal sacrifices of the OT were mandated by God. But if they were offered without genuine repentance and faith, God did not want them. You have given me an open ear. This difficult phrase may be idiomatic. The Hebrew more literally translated is, ears you have dug for me, text note, which would mean that God gave the psalmist ears to hear and obey. The phrase is important because it is cited in Cheeb. 1057. Hebrews uses the Septuagint translation, a body have you prepared for me. The meaning is the same. The ears are to the body as the part to the whole. 
The obedience of Jesus in the body is to offer himself once and for all, replacing the animal sacrifices of the OT. 47 In the scroll of the book it is written of me. The reference may refer to the commandment recorded for kings in Deut. 17. 48 I delight to do your will. This verse comes to the heart of the matter. The psalmist offers what God requires, heartfelt obedience. 49 Great Congregation. C 22, 25 and 5, 18. 18 These verses are lamentation. 40 12 Evils. Iniquities. The psalmist identifies the source of his troubles as both external, enemies seeking to thwart him. Cf. 38, 11, 20, and internal, his own sin. 38, I heard on the radio this. 0 and 13, 17, these verses are nearly identical to P.S. 70, 0, 13, make haste, to help. In his desperate plight, the psalmist boldly asks the Lord to come to his rescue. 40, 14, be turned back and brought to dishonor. He wants the Lord to turn the tables on the enemy. They seek the psalmist's ruin and his life. He asks God to ruin them. Great is the Lord. See note on, 0, 17, poor and needy. See note on 9, 18. P.S. 41, the psalm has three strophes, introduction to Hebrew poetry, and a concluding doxology, instructions for receiving care, V.V., First to three, recounting of a past prayer for healing, Rev. 4.10, and confidence in God's pleasure, Rev. 11.12. A doxology serves to conclude Book 1, T13, Introduction, Characteristics and Themes, 41.3. These verses give instructions for receiving care. 41. Blessed. See note on 1.1. Considers the poor, understands or empathizes with those who are helpless and unable to take care of themselves. The psalmist is in this condition due to his debilitating sickness. Accordingly, the first three verses here may have been spoken to him by another person, perhaps a priest. The Lord delivers him. Those strong in self-confidence do not turn to the Lord, because they think they have no need for him. Those not so deluded, realizing their weakness, have nowhere else to turn. 41. In the land. The Lord preserves the life of his people, but he will also prosper them in the land. This applies the promise of the land found in the Abrahamic covenant. General 12.13. These verses are a re's verses are a recounting of a past prayer for healing. 41.6. He utters empty words. The psalmist's enemies visited him while he was ill, speaking words of comfort, but afterwards spreading malicious lies about him. 41.9. Lifted his heel. For this idiom see General 5 1926, where the noun heel is connected with the verb, to deceive. The point is, that the psalmist's close friend has betrayed him in his moment of need. He is abandoned by everyone. Jesus applied this verse specifically to Judas Iscariot, John 13 18. 1 11, 12 These verses express confidence in God's pleasure. 41 13, a doxology, that concludes Book 1, Introduction, Characteristics and Themes. The doxology in all likelihood is an independent poem. Blessed be. God is blessed in response to all the blessings he has granted in PSS. 141. Okay, well that is all um, the psalm portion of our day today. So now let's, well actually, I mean, I would encourage you to revisit these psalms and pray through them. But yeah, Acts 23, open up your Bible to Acts 23 starting in verse 12. Acts 23 verse 12. I'm going to have to find verse 12 real quick though. The Pharisees and the Sadducees and the assembly was divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, nor angel, nor spirit, but the Pharisees yeah, acknowledge them all. About then a great clamor nine. arose, and some of the scribes of the Pharisees' party stood up and contended sharply. We find nothing wrong in this man. What if a spirit or an angel spoke to him? And when the dissension became violent, the tribune, afraid that Paul would be torn to pieces by them, commanded the soldiers to go down and take him away from among them by force and bring him into the barracks. The following night the Lord stood by him and said, Take courage, for as you have testified to the facts about me in Jerusalem, so you must testify also in Rome. When it was day, the Jews made a plot and bound themselves by an oath neither to eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. There were more than 40 who made this conspiracy. They went to the chief priests and elders and said, We have strictly bound ourselves by an oath to taste no food till we have killed Paul. Now therefore, you along with the council, give notice to the tribune to bring him down to you as though you were going to determine his case more exactly and we are ready to kill him before he comes near. Now the son of Paul's sister heard of their ambush, so he went and entered the barracks and told Paul. Paul called one of the centurions and said, Take this young man to the tribune, for he has something to tell him. So he took him and brought him to the tribune and said, Paul the prisoner called me and asked me to bring this young man to you, as he has something to say to you. The tribune took him by the hand, and going aside, asked him privately, 
What is it that you have to tell me? And he said, The Jews have agreed to ask you to bring Paul down to the council tomorrow, as though they were going to inquire somewhat more closely about him. But do not be persuaded by them, for more than forty of their men are lying in ambush for him, who have bound themselves by an oath neither to eat nor drink till they have killed him. And now they are ready, waiting for your consent. So the tribune dismissed the young man, charging him, Tell no one that you have informed me of these things. Then he called two of the centurions and said, Get ready two hundred soldiers, with seventy horsemen and two hundred spearmen to go as far as Caesarea at the third hour of the night. Also provide mounts for Paul to ride and bring him safely to Felix the governor. And he wrote a letter to this effect. Claudius Lysias, to His Excellency the Governor Felix, greetings. This man was seized by the Jews and was about to be killed by them when I came upon them with the soldiers and rescued him having learned that he was a Roman citizen. And desiring to know the charge for which they were accusing him, I brought him down to their council. I found that he was being accused about questions of their law, but charged with nothing deserving death or imprisonment. And when it was disclosed to me that there would be a plot against the man, I sent him to you at once, ordering his accusers also to state before you what they have against him. So the soldiers, according to their instructions, took Paul and brought him by night to Antipatris. And on the next day they returned to the barracks, letting the horsemen go on with him. When they had come to Caesarea and delivered the letter to the governor, they presented Paul also before him. On reading the letter, he asked what province he was from. And when he learned that he was from Cilicia, he said, I will give you a hearing when your accusers arrive. And he commanded him to be guarded in Herod's Praetorium. Acts Okay, well, um, just awesome how you see God um, protecting Paul um, for the purpose for which he has for Paul. Um, nothing will thwart God's purpose, uh, even though many want to kill him. Um, and then, you see, yeah, you see the love of the brethren to protect Paul, um, the brethren that came in and then. Yeah, but anyways, so let's let Brother Sproul take the take the lead on these notes. So I'm gonna, let's go to the notes. Acts 23, 12, 35. 23, 16, the son of Paul's sister, evidently some members of Paul's family are in Jerusalem, told Paul. Prisoners received their necessary supplies from relatives and friends who regularly visited them. 23, 23, 24, heavily equipped infantry and cavalry delivers Paul safely to Felix, the procurator of the imperial province of Judea. The official provincial headquarters is at Caesarea. 2326 Governor Felix. Felix was a former slave, and as a freedman had ascended to an influential position in the Roman government. In AD 52 the Emperor Claudius sent him as governor to Caesarea. Felix was addressed as Most Excellent Felix, 24-2, during his eight-year administration. The Roman historian Tacitus said that Felix occupied the office of a king while having the mind of a slave, saturated with cruelty and lust. 2327 Having learned that he was a Roman citizen, the Tribune prudently omits the detail that he had ordered Paul's flogging before he learned of his Roman citizenship. 2331 Antipatris, a town built by Herod the Great in honor of his father Antipater, about 30 miles 48 kilometers northwest of Jerusalem. The distance covered overnight puts the party beyond the reach of the would-be assassins, so the 200 spearmen on foot return to Jerusalem while the 70 mounted on horses press on more quickly, conducting Paul to the governor's palace in the provincial capital Caesarea Maritima. 2335 Herod's Praetorium, the official residence built by Herod the Great, it became a Roman praetorium or official residence and included prisoner's cells. John 1828, Phil, 113. Okay, well, let's close in prayer. That's all the text for today. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you are our... You are our God and our deliverer. Um, you are the rock that we can hold on to. Um, that your steadfast love endures forever. O oh God of mercy and love. Lord... Thank you that uh, though we are but a breath, that you, you save many of us, Lord, many humans, um, all those that will humble themselves before you and repent and seek your face uh, all through and by your grace, Lord. <sighs> oh, 
Lord, um, would you make us effective like Paul? Would you use us for your own glory? Would you help us to preach your gospel? Lord, would we delight to do your will like you, Jesus? Set the example for us, the perfect example and beyond. Lord, um, would our fill our would our food to do be to do the will of you, God? Um, thank you for teaching us what your will is in the scriptures. Help us to tell of your steadfast love, of your goodness, of your good works, of your salvation, of your faithfulness in the great congregation, and um, to tell the lost as well of your gospel, Lord, and of what you've done in our lives. Father, would you call and draw more to yourself? Would you be glorified and your people delight in you? We pray all this and we thank you for today. Would we continue to meditate on your word all the day long? In Jesus' name, amen. All right, that's all the text for today. Um, grace and peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.